Hello friends, this video on anatomy of flowering plants part 23 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Talk about the next type of cambium that is the cord cambium. So this is again a layer of meristematic tissue which develops around the cortex region and that is why it is called cork cambium. Right? So two meristematic layers basically develops. One in the vascular region and the other one in the cortex region. You know what is cortex, right? The endodermis and the parenchyma cells together is known as cortex. So what does it do? It tries to replace the broken epidermis during the secondary growth. As I said, whenever secondary growth takes place, more and more secondary xylem is formed. As a result, the secondary phloem and the primary phloem gets destroyed. So the epidermis layers also get broken. So all their outer layers get broken. So there has to be something which will replace the broken epidermis because if epidermis is not there, there is no protection. Correct? So for that purpose, a meristematic tissue develops in the cortex region and they will give rise to new cells which will be a replacement to the epidermis layer. Now again, this layer also can form cells on the outer side as well as on the inner side. So here, so this is cork. I'm sorry, this is cork cambium. This black line which you see. Now this can again give rise to new cells on the outer side as well as on the inner side. So on the outer side, it forms cork. These new cells on the outer side forms cork and the cells on the inner side gives rise to secondary cortex. Now this cork is also known as another term which is often used for cork is phelem. And another term which is often used for secondary cortex is phelloderm. So what is this secondary cortex? Secondary cortex is nothing but it is made up of parenchyma cells. So now you see, considering both vascular cambium and cord cambium, the thickness of the stem has increased so much. So basically, this was vascular cambium, right? This layer was vascular cambium. So vascular cambium gave rise to secondary xylem here and secondary phloem here. Correct? And this vascular cambium gave rise to secondary xylem here and secondary phloem here. Now again outside when cord cambium came up which gave rise to secondary cortex here and cork here. So the thicknesses keep on increasing. So earlier when we started with it was only a primary xylem, primary phloem. Then it became primary xylem, primary. So I'll just write it which will help you to understand how the thickness increases. Thickness is basically this cross section, right? Now, when this diameter keeps on increasing, what will happen? The circumference keeps on increasing. That means the thickness is basically increasing. So, when we started with, there was only one primary xylem and primary phloem. That's all. Then we had primary xylem, cambium and then primary phloem. Then we have primary xylem, secondary xylem, cambium, then secondary phloem and then phloem. Then even after we had starting as primary xylem, then secondary xylem, then vascular cambium, then secondary phloem, then primary phloem. Outside that we had the secondary cortex, then cork cambium and the outermost is cork. So the number of layers kept on increasing and as a result, the width of the stem keeps on increasing and this is known as secondary growth, right? 
Okay, so I hope sec the concept of secondary growth is clear now. Now, this secondary growth is observed not only in stems, but also in roots. In roots also, we similarly have a vascular cambium, a cork cambium, and the concept still remains the same. It is just that the structure of the root is a little different, right? Like when you compare a dicot stem and a dicot root their structure is little different so because the a pattern of the vascular bundles are different in both of them so there it is radial here it was conjoined so those differences will be there but otherwise the concept of secondary growth will remain the same now talking about cork cambium we often use the term bark what is bark bark is nothing but all tissues exterior to the vascular cambium Therefore, including the secondary phloem, anything that is outside the vascular cambium. So just now I was telling, right, inside you have primary xylem, then secondary xylem, then vascular cambium, then you have secondary phloem, then primary phloem, and then you have secondary cortex, then you have cork cambium, and then you have the outermost layer that is cork. So where was vascular cambium? This was vascular cambium. So anything outside this is termed as bark. We, you often would have heard about the bark of the tree. Cut the bark of the tree. So bark is nothing but this entire outermost layer which we see that is bark. So the xylem is very much protected to deep inside the stem. Cell layers, so what are the cell layers that constitute the bark? It consists of secondary phloem, periderm and what is periderm? Periderm is nothing but cork plus cork cambium plus secondary cortex. All of them together is given the term Periderm. So secondary phloem and periderm together constitute the bark. So now that we have understood the concept of cambium, let us quickly have a look at the vascular and cork cambium together. So now you remember I told you that I'll explain this figure towards the end of the lesson when I have covered everything. So now is the right time. So look at the first figure. Here we just have the pith primary xylem, primary phloem and vascular cambium. Just three important layers are there. But with time what happens this vascular cambium gives rise to new cells by its cell division on both inner side and outer side. So inner side it forms secondary xylem, outer side it forms secondary phloem. And earlier it already had primary xylem, primary phloem and vascular cambium. So now the width increases due to these two additional layers, secondary xylem and secondary phloem. Now the amount of secondary xylem started increasing drastically. Therefore, the secondary phloem and the primary phloem started breaking down. The epidermis also started breaking down. So to compensate for that, another layer came up that is the cork cambium. So cork cambium is present in the cortex region. So now what happened? This cork cambium again gave rise to the cork, the periderm, the secondary cortex. So now because of the cell division in the cork cambium, there was further increase in the girth or in the width. Right? So that is why you see initially this was the thickness then later due to the activity of vascular cambium the thickness increases again due to the activity of cork cambium the thickness further increases so this is how secondary growth takes place in plants right so i hope the secondary growth in stem is very much clear now now in a very similar way secondary growth also happens in root as i said it is only that the inside xylem phloem arrangement is little different so here you can see this is the xylem this is the phloem the red colored structure is xylem and these green structures are phloem they are radial arrangement one xylem one phloem one xylem one phloem right so this is your xylem and phloem in between you have the vascular cambium Right? So this vascular cambium will form primary, secondary xylem inside and secondary phloem outside. So this secondary xylem and secondary phloem are additional layers because of which the thickness increases. 
After this, what happens? The cork cambium is formed and cork cambium will again form a cork outside and a secondary cortex inside. So basically the step remains the same. It is just that the structure of the dicot root is little different from the dicot step. So, thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.